in the Weddell Sea for a month. We were, go, we were moving up and down. We were surveying the seabed. The temperature was plummeting. We were brushing the snow off ourselves. And then we found it. With a few days left to go, we found it on the seabed. We'd started to give up hope, but there it was. And since then, we've been, we've been pretty happy, I've got to say. And what, what was that moment like when you saw it for the first time and the condition that it's in? You know, when you work towards something for so many months and years, in the case of some of the people on this ship, you, you forget that what it is you're actually working towards sometimes. You just, it, it, it's, it, you get, it gets lost in the details. So when you actually see it, the ship, that you've given up so much, people have left families behind and they've sacrificed in so many ways. When you see that ship, you think, I can't believe we've done this. It's, it strikes you. We, first of all, we were very quiet. We were very quiet. And then eventually we just started cheering and clapping and all the rest of it. But there was a moment of just awe and silence. And we just couldn't quite believe that we'd done it. And particularly because the ship, as you mentioned, is an astonishing condition. The wood is like a golden brown color. Um, you can still see the gold lettering on the stern, the brass lettering shining like gold, saying endurance. It just looks like a, a, a serviceable vessel to this day because of the lack of wood eating microorganisms in the Weddell Sea in Antarctica. The temperature of the water is so cold. It just is so beautifully preserved. And we, we realized that we had something big on our hands. We realized that this was going to reach far beyond the community of people that care about Shackton or history. This was going to go all over the world and it was going to inspire people. Yeah, it really does look like something out of a movie, huh? It, that, you're absolutely right. And that's partly the technology we've been able to get down there with ultra high definition cameras. We've been able to get down there with laser scanning. So we've got a, a millimeter perfect 3D model of the ship. Um, and it just means that we can now broadcast our findings in a way that 10, 20, 30 years ago would have been, would have been much, much harder to engage with people. Now people are opening up social media and they're like, what is going on here? This is extraordinary. It's also the, uh, the water in the Weddell Sea is some of the clearest water on planet Earth. So you just get the clarity. You can see so much on the ship. So tell us a bit about the history of Shackleton and this particular expedition that he was on. Well, buckle up, because it's the greatest story of survival and, uh, and heroism of all time. He goes into the Weddell Sea intending to cross the Antarctic continent from one side to the other. No one's ever done that before. He doesn't even get to the shore. He gets frozen in the ice on his way there. The ice then moves, it moves him north and away from Antarctica and it eventually crushes his ship and his men have to camp on the ice and they watch their ship sink on the 21st of November, 1915. Then they live on the ice a few more months. It starts to break up in the spring. They, you know, the, the ice flow is no longer livable. They pile into the three rowing boats they have with them and cross this stretch of ocean actually that I'm on now, going to Elephant Island, a little scrap of land in which it's really impossible to survive a very long time, but at least it's land. They get on the shore, they kiss the ground. They haven't been on shore for 500 days. Then Shackleton takes an elite group and goes 800 miles to South Georgia, where there is a whaling station with the other human beings through some of the roughest seas on planet Earth. They survive a hurricane. They then get to South Georgia, climb over some mountains and glaciers and get help from these whalers in South Georgia. It isn't, he then goes back and rescues everyone on Elephant Island. It's an extraordinary tale. So what are you expecting to find on the ship? So we found, this, just looking at what's on the surface, there's the ship's bell, there's crockery, some plates, there's a boot, a mysterious boot lying there on the, on the deck. Um, there's, there's, a, there's an instrument for measuring the depth, which looks like you could use it today. You can still see the figures on the, it's like a clock face showing the depth and, and it's perfect condition. Um, it is, it is a, 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 just a, it's a thing of beauty in itself. But I think more than that, it just will inspire anyone that sees it with a, with a passion for exploration, for adventure, for getting out there and finding lost things. So what's your plan with the wreck now? Are you going to be retrieving things from it? We're not allowed to touch it. So it's protected by the Antarctic Treaty. It's going to be left down there. We've done a survey. We haven't retrieved anything from it. We haven't fiddled with it. We haven't done anything to it at all. So it'll stay there. Maybe in 100 years' time, who knows? They might find a way to lift it and preserve it and everything. But for, for the moment, it stays where it lies. And what about the timing of this close to the 100th anniversary of Shackleton's funeral? Well, this is the weird thing. We discovered it on Saturday, March the 5th, 2022. Exactly 100, day, 100 years to the day 
since Shackleton was buried on South Georgia on his fourth final and obviously unfinished Antarctic expedition because he died during it. It is a spooky echo from history. And Dan, tell us about your expedition. When did this begin, this effort to find the ship? Well, people have been planning this for years, of course, getting the technology sorted, um, gathering the funds, gathering the expedition together. Uh, we've been planning it for a long time as well and setting up things like this. I had to meet the way we wanted to film it, and TikTok it, and Instagram it, and use all the modern technology we could to bring this to life for people all over the world. We embarked on the ship on the 1st of February. We had all sorts of issues with COVID, but we got away with it. We got a COVID-free ship. And we've been out here now, what, I guess, coming up to a month and a half. Uh, we've been through some big old storms in the Southern Ocean. We've been through temperatures of minus 30 and below in Antarctica but it's been a heck of an experience. And the good news is we're coming home with those all important pictures and other data about the shipwreck that is just that are flying around the world that millions of people have been sharing and enjoying over the last 24 hours. Was it getting to the point where you thought you, you might not find it? Embarrassingly, yes. It was. <laughs> I'm a bit of, I'm an optimist. But I have to say, I was, I was like giving up, but luckily, I'm not in charge of the subsea diving. And they didn't give up and they kept going. And you know what's funny? Because Shackleton's motto is through endurance, we conquer. And they at the back endured. They endured everything. I, I, much, they had much harder than I did. They were working around the clock. They were in, working outdoors in the sub zero temperatures, getting covered in water and sea spray, frost and snow. Uh, and they endured. They absolutely never gave up. And then, sure enough, they conquered.